Hey, what's going on YouTube? Today, I'm looking at three different Prank Kids builds that I want to show you guys, depending on um, the format and how the meta shapes up, maybe even with the new ban list. Hopefully, one of these cards will get hit and I won't be able to play it in Prank Kids. That is Mystic Mine. And we're also looking at a good number of Prank Kids combos, as you can see from the top at the Dueling Book replay. So, let's go ahead and get on into it. And if you do enjoy today's video, please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel and Give me other deck ideas of what to play uh, because when I get back into real Yu-Gi-Oh, not just Duel Links, I do want to know a lot of decks and uh, know the play lines for a lot of decks so I know where to hand trap them and all that good stuff. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get right on into it. So, for Mystic Mind Kids or Mind Prank Kids, whatever you want to call it, we're playing the full suite of Prank Kids cards. I believe almost all of the versions of Prank Kids that I have here today to show you are going to be playing three of every kid so three dropsies three frenzies three roxies and three flamesies or lampsies lampsies sorry um and then two pandemonium which is the fusion spell searchable of searchable that's why i only play two of it two place because i don't really want to brick on the third it's not good going first only good going second but it is technically another prank kid's name and it's whatever name you want it to be so that's why it's not a one of it's a three of technically with terraforming but there's another field spell in this deck mystic mine and three mystic mine and one fusion recycling plant i'm also playing three polymerizations to go with the one fusion recycling plant so that i'm playing five polymerizations uh one pranks searchable and one plan also searchable uh, the one ofs we are playing Insta Fusion because this makes Rocket Ride, and Rocket Ride's just broken. And we're playing one called by the Grave, called by the Grave. No need to mention it. I think this card should also be banned. Uh, three Droll and Lockbird, three Ash Blossom Joy String, and three Nibiru. The reason why I'm not playing Infinite Impermanence, uh, like I've seen a lot of builds playing, is because of the fact that if you are on the Pranks plan and if you are doing the Mystic Mind Burn Loop on turn one, uh, drawing the Impermanence at the end of your turn isn't going to actually help you because you can't set it. So instead of playing um, Imprint and Impermanences, I just decide to put in Droll and Locks in the main, and I have the exact same sideboard for all of my um, versions of the deck, and Effect Veiler is in the side. Maybe in this version of the deck, I would put Effect Veilers in the main and take the um, Droll and Locks and put them in the side. But I'll show you guys the Mystic Mind. I'll show you guys all the combos in a bit, and we'll start with the Mystic Mind combo if I remember where I put it. So you guys can see that one first. It's probably the most interesting of all the combos I have. I also have a two-card access card comp, access code talker combo, or three cards if you need the pop off of the Unicorn first. It's pretty sick. Uh, let's go ahead and get into Hand Trap Kit. This is probably the most standard version of Prank Kit. Uh, it's a fuck ton of hand traps. It's a full... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, level twelve. It's a full twelve hand traps, and every prank kid's name. Uh, in this version, we are actually playing three place because we need to get to our one prank kid's monster, and we need to get to a bunch of hand traps. So let's go ahead and get into the differences between this deck and the other one. This deck is also playing Upstart Goblin and One for One because One for One is essentially another name because Fanzies, the most important of all the um, prank kids, is actually a level one. Hmm, who'd have thought? So that means instead of playing uh, 15 names, which is what we can max out at uh, if you're not playing terraforming, um, we're playing 15 names because of the three place. We're also playing one one for one, so that makes 60 names and 17 names with terraforming. Pretty pretty cool. Uh, in this deck, the difference in the hand traps is that I'm playing Ghost Ogre instead of Draw and Lock, and I am playing Impermanence because of the fact that I'm not trying to Mystic Mind Loop you. Drawing to this card is pretty okay, especially because of the fact that. Um, if you draw it alongside of a pandemonium, like if you have it in your opening hand and you didn't need to use it to negate something, uh, you can set it so that it's harder for them to cosmic cycle in your pandemonium, which is like the worst thing you can do to this deck. If your opponent can hit your pandemonium before you can tag out your bow wow bark during their turn to get to your other materials, you can't make your battle butler and that cuts you off of the game completely and you have to redo your starting combo to get to it again. Or hopefully just go for the access code talker kill on turn three if you can disrupt them enough with him. Um, there, that's really the only differences with this deck. I, I believe this one is also playing two pranks because I think that in a deck with a lot more hand traps, you want to be able to draw into those. So double pranks is a lot better here. Um, a lot of times, I believe in this deck, I would probably go for pranks over plan. Uh, when it comes to doing the standard combo, how you get two spells and traps back from your graveyard, you get either a pandemonium and a pranks or a pandemonium and a plan. Uh, in this deck, in this version of it with the 12 hand traps, I would much rather if I already drew one impermanence go for the prank so I can go ahead and try to get more disruptions on my opponent because double Raigeki isn't always enough in this day and age in Yu-Gi-Oh, you know? So we're hoping that this will be enough. Um, a bunch of hand traps. 
And the last version is a little wonky, it's a little weird. Uh, shout outs to uh, Lithium2300, he was playing a 42 card build uh, when Roxy's first, not Roxy's, uh, when Meow Meow Mew first got announced. Um, I believe that's his name, correct? Yeah, Meow Meow Mew. When this card first got announced, uh, the kitty, uh, he was playing a 42 card build with Fright for Patchwork and two bricks in the main. So I decided to give it my own spin and instead of playing 42, I'm playing 40 even. Uh, and it is only playing the the nine hand traps like the first build, like the Mystic Mind Prank Kids build. Uh, and those are Nibiru, uh, Ash Blossom, and Infinite Impermanence, probably the three most versatile hand traps in the format of Yu in this current format of Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, we'll see if a boundless change. The full suite of kids, but only two of the plates. Once again, we don't really want to brick on place in this version of the deck. There's so many bricks already. Uh, it was a brickless version of the deck, but now like getting the third place can become a brick if you draw like three place and like two hand traps or whatever you know you really want other things to keep your place started um and we're also playing two pot of avarice as spice in the main deck especially because we're playing um we're playing the patchwork and patchwork is going to get us to an edge of sabers to be your discard for roxies so that you're not discarding an actual card you're discarding something that's it, it was it was real card advantage because fright for patchwork is a plus one but the edge and sabers is something you can't do anything with so when you resolve a patchwork and get yourself a polymerization and an edge of sabers when you do your roxy's play at the end you can banish the edge of sabers from your hand to get a real card and then if you get you know plan as well you're drawing two cards per turn three cards technically if you think about the fact that this is technically drawing you an additional card um this is probably the most standard of all the lists except for the bricks except for the patchworks and edge of sabers um, those could be either more hand traps or like Thunder Dragon, two double Thunder Dragon fusion and a Verte Anaconda in the extra deck somewhere, and uh, fusion recycling plant things like that. But I, I this this is a build that I actually really liked piloting when I was testing it out. It was really fun, but having and th this this card also baits Ash, which is really cool. Um, they see patchwork and they don't know if you're actually playing right for not the first game um, Fluffles. So a lot of times if I start off the game by activating this, they just immediately ash it. And I'm like, I look at the other four cards in my hand, I'm like, oh, cool, time to go off, you know? And then I just go off. And a lot of times it actually ends up winning me the game because of the fact that they ash this instead of me having to try to chain block a kid or something. Um, now let's go ahead and get into the combo so this video is not too long. Uh, let me see if I can find that Mystic Mind combo first. Here it is right here. The Mystic Mind combo is technically a 2.5 card combo. One card is for Roxy's. Uh, but you don't have to trigger Roxy's effect technically, so you could technically get away with doing this as a two-card combo. But if you have a dead card in hand that you can't use, like say a Called by the Grave on turn one and you no longer want it, what you can do is instead you can send it off with Roxy. So, go ahead and go through it. Then play. Oh, I'm really slow. Wow. Okay. Uh, let's get it started. Meow Meow Mew, of course. And then we're going to go ahead and get, um, I don't know what just happened. Uh, we're going to dump pranks with Fanzy. The big thing here is you dump pranks with Fanzy. Uh, I hit I hit pause. You don't play with with uh, pranks with fans. The reason why you dump pranks is because you're going to need it for this combo. Um, it's the standard combo up until right here, where you get the pandemonium. You, you summon this back. Next play, you make yourself a rocket ride. Rocket ride will trigger. You also burn them for 500 with that fancies earlier. Please remember that. And you also gained a thousand with uh, with with dropsies. Please remember that. There it goes, bringing back the Doe Doodle Doo, and bringing back this. Then you send these two off for Bow Wow Bark, then you activate this effect, get back Pandemonium, and to get back Pranks. Then you banish that to draw into a hand trap. Ooh, probably not a good hand trap, but then you activate the Mystic Mine. Now here you have one monster, and then it's soon, and then you also get a second draw here. You're gonna, and then you're gonna go in phase. You're gonna activate the effect of Pranks. Pranks is going to, uh, Always send back the Doe Doodle Doo, the Rocket Ride, and one other card. I like to send back Roxy's, uh, but if you, there's something in Dire Straits that you're in need of, maybe the Meow Meow Mew, so that you don't use both, you send back the Meow Meow Mew. Uh, but you always want to maybe send back one kid into the main deck, if you can. Um, and then you see you drew another card. So this it replay ends, but what happens here is when your opponent commits to their first monster, if they don't out the Mystic Mine, when they commit to their first monster, you tag out the Bow Wow Bark and add two kids back to your hand. And then you loop this play where you make a rocket ride, and while they have one monster in the board, it, on the board, and you do too, you attack them directly with the rocket ride. You trigger the Roxies to draw, but you do not special summon. You attack them directly with the rocket ride. Then after you do that, that's a thousand. They take fifteen hundred every turn, and you're gaining a thousand every turn. You tag out the rocket ride, and you bring back um, 
the uh, what's his name? You bring back the, the Doe Doodle Doo, and you bring back any other kid because you can special summon under you can summon under Mystic Mind. You just can't activate effects. So then immediately you make a uh, Bow Wow Bark and you do it all over again. You just continue to do that over and over. Uh, but that because the the only thing on the field will be the the only thing on the field will be the Do Doodle Doo, so you'll be able to search yourself another Pandemonium so that you can keep it in your back row to keep it threatening your opponent. Uh, if you didn't have to use this one, then you'd keep it. And if you had to use it, then you shuffle it back with your friend. Uh, now let's go ahead and get into one of the other combos. This combo is a four summon play around Nibiru. You lose a little bit of resources, you don't gain as much. Well, you don't really lose resources, but you don't gain as much. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at it. So what you do is you dump the name you have. You dump the name you're missing. So you dump the Dropsies with the Fanzies. Uh, so this works with any two kids. As long as they're not the same name, then you make um, you make the do doodle do, and you don't trigger the effect. You only trigger the effect to do the action, like which is burn them five hundred, gain a thousand, draw a card, whatever. But you don't summon. And then here you tag out the do doodle do, and you add back the two cards because you're leaving the pandemonium in hand. You're not using it in your combo sequence. And what this does is this allows you to play through Nibiru, play, play under Nibiru. Now you still have the threat of a battle butler without them being able to do something about it. Uh, this is the standard one card combo, uh, but standard one or 1.5 card combo, but with Fright for Patchwork. So we're just going to get into it. We're going to let the whole thing play. We're not going to say anything. Uh, just at the end, when you use Rocket Ride, I'm sorry, when you use Roxy's, Roxy's is going to get rid of the Edge M Sabers to draw a card, which is a really cool play. It's just the standard prank kids play, so I don't think I really need to explain too much about it. Uh, there's tons of YouTube videos on this play, but all you're doing is you're getting rid of the edge jump card to draw an additional card. And look at that. Bada bing, bada boom. The normal play, you end up with one, two, three, four, five, six cards. So it's a plus one. Really, really good. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Uh, and then here is the totally awesome play. It requires two kids non water and a water. So you need three kids in hand and a and a fusion spell. We're gonna show you with Fright for Patchwork because I am playing Patchwork in the deck, so it's pretty cool. You're gonna poly here. You're gonna poly here, right here. You're gonna make Rocket Ride. Rocket Ride is gonna activate its effect. Then you're gonna activate the effect of both the kids in the graveyard to dump something, probably plan, and then to draw. And then you're going to make, totally awesome. Then you're gonna normal summon your kid and go in for your standard play. Kid, we'll go ahead and summon one that you haven't yet, which is Lampsies. And then, yep, you're going to get back your two cards. And then you're going to tribute off the rocket ride. Oops, pardon me. You're going to tribute off the rocket ride. Get back two. And make yourself a Bow Wow Bark. Bow Wow Bark will get back the other two cards during your opponent's end. I'm sorry, during your opponent's turn, you'll get back the other two cards. I forgot to get back that card off of um, the the monster, the uh, Dojo Little Doo. You'll have to pardon me. And then here is probably my favorite combo. This is the two card or three card. Um, you specifically need two pranks uh, because you need a discardable prank card for prank kids plank pranks to uh, make access code talker. But let's just go ahead and get into it. Right here, you're going to dump pranks. Or do you dump Pandemonium? I think you do, I'm dumping Pandemonium because I would still want to be able to have access to it if I need it. And then you're going to search pranks off of the Doodle Doo. The special. Nice. And then you're going to search pranks. Then you're going to activate the effect. If you had actually used Rockies during this combo sequence, you would actually have to trade this card off in my hand for another one. We're going to activate that to discard. Then we're going to make Access Code Talker, activate its effect. Gain some attack, and if we look at our graveyard, we have one, two, three different attributes in our graveyard. So that means we can get three pops and then swing in with the access code talker for the win. I think this uh, has been a pretty interesting YouTube video. I'm kind of bad at YouTube. I'm not like the best. So if you if you like my content and you want to support, please feel free to hit that subscribe button. Call to action again at the end of the video too, right? So. Uh, feel free to hit subscribe. Ask me about other Yu-Gi-Oh decks. Maybe there's another deck that I can think to make. I will probably start streaming this deck, one of these variants. I don't know which one, maybe all three. Uh, doing some dueling book rated on uh, twitch.tv slash beanie thuggish. And it's been beanie thuggish.
We'll see you guys later. Y'all have a good day. Take care. Peace.